I have about 20 employees right now, right? And yes, it is my goal to keep the operation lean. I have no choice because I decided early on, uh, I took a $100,000 investment for the shade room, right? And that was the only investment money that I did take. Mm-hmm. And I took it with a company called NDVC. This was before I had an LLC. This was in 2015. Um, it was before I had an LLC. So, and- my, so, so one year in business, mm-hmm. somebody saw the potential of the company and was willing to give you $100,000? Well, after a year in business, that's when we started getting those accolades. Like 30 and 30 was in 2015. I want to say it was in 2015. Um, and then uh, New York Times wrote about us. Um, they called us the Instagram of TMZ. Mm-hmm. It was a black woman who wrote about us at the New York Times, Jenna Wortham. I'm always say her name. Shout out to her. Um, but the investor read that article. And I have to tell the story because it's a crazy story. Please. He read the article. How much time do we have? Got as much time as you have. Okay. Um, so the, the investor read the article from the New York Times and he reached out to me. He was having a program where he was giving out money to certain businesses for investment. He gave me two days. He told me, he said, um, you have two days to figure out whether you want to take this investment money of $100,000. You have to understand at that time, I had um, I was making $5,000 a month around there. <laughs> and um, I was in a Hawthorne still. So for me, it, I was like, oh, I need this money. But more than the money, what I needed was his expertise. Because he was a big time investor in Silicon Valley. He had invested in Indeed, Foursquare. He was an early investor in a lot of those companies and was extremely successful. And so what I wanted most was his business knowledge. And it felt good to have a comfort of sitting on $100,000 at that time, which to me was a lot of money at that time. So I traded the 100000 for 7% of the business, right? Um, so I owned 93% at that time. And um, throughout that process, I was able to be in the room with big um, CEOs and uh, uh, leaders in the industry. I got to have one-on-one conversations with like the owner of, the founder of Indeed, literally like him and four, four of us, four or five of us in the room. And we get to ask him whatever questions we want to ask. Um, and I feel like the trajectory of the shade room is a direct reflection of that, that education. Because indeed, if you notice about companies like Indeed and Craigslist, they don't really, you don't see them with the bells and whistles. Right. Like you don't see them every year changing their site and making it just, and adding all these features. They tend to just be um, very focused on providing their um, audience with a platform that gives them exactly what they need. And if it works, they'll keep it working in the same way for 10 years. Have you noticed? Like Craigslist hasn't really changed, right? And so, um, and so that, so you'll see that the shade room kind of is a reflection of that in the sense that our main focus is how do we continue to serve our audience and how do we continue to give them what they need? Right now they're saying they need it on Instagram primarily. Um, so we're giving it to them and we've just been focused on building the audience. And what that has done is, it's, that's why they come to us 30 times a day because they feel that we are serving them so well that they feel like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll continue to interact with this brand 30 times a day because one thing I know they're going to be open. I know they're going to be open late. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know they're going to have 70 posts every day. For, you know what I mean? And so the same thing with Craigslist. If you're, you know if you're looking for a, a, a old bike or, you know, a job or whatever it is, you know that Craigslist got it. They're gonna, it's gonna be the same format you're used to and stuff like that. And so that is um, one of the things I took from that. But once the company was able to make its own money and focus on profit, and you know, so many companies don't focus on profit. I think profit is one of the biggest things you need to focus on when you're thinking about is your business healthy? Can you turn a profit? You know what I'm saying? And we could talk about that. Um, later with all of the big unicorns and all these businesses kind of falling and, um, you know, like Uber, you know, all these things because the, the focus was never on profit. Um, it was on getting more investment money and becoming a unicorn and you know, whatever. Um, but I think that, um, his, 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 uh, program taught us to focus on how can I take this money that I have reinvested in the company, basically bootstrapping. How do I reinvest in the company, make more money, and then hire more people than we, you know what I mean? Kind of like that, right? Um, and so that's how we built the company, very lean. Um, 
we didn't have an office until recently and now we're thinking about throwing away the office again because we yeah. really didn't need it you know um you know being in a space with different media companies who have three thousand employees and we have 20 but we could be louder our content it has more reach you know what I mean and so for us it's like it's just indicative of the fact that when you are a resourceful person which I learned to be from my past and when you use your resources you can have a bigger reach than someone who has all of the money in the world because sometimes when you get all that investment money and you have all that money at your disposal you're not as resourceful you can do anything you can afford anything so us not being able to afford anything taught us to be very um um, strategic and intentional about every move we made and that kind of, that helped us a lot so question for you i gotta believe since getting that initial hundred thousand dollar investment you've had millions thrown at you why not take you know these checks from the different places from these different investors at this point and i get that you want to keep it lean but we live in a society and you spoke about silicon valley earlier People mm -hmm. tend to, to put value on their companies based on how much money they have been able to, to, to raise with the company. So where's your discipline with that? Because, it, you know, I got to believe that the truth is kind of the truth. See, I want to. Can I tell the truth, though? Because the Please. truth is kind of I don't want to sound like that. I'm going to tell you like this. When, after I took the investment money from the first man who, it was a $100,000 investment, he was an advocate for not taking investment money. So it's almost like... Hold on, the guy say, who you took the investment yes. money from was an advocate for not taking additional um, investment? Yes, his name, is, his name is Bryce Roberts and his company is NDVC. He does a program, if you're a black um, entrepreneur looking for um, funding, he's actually a good resource because he has dedicated himself to providing funding for people of color. And I would recommend him every any day because he's an amazing, amazing ally. He's a white man, but he's an amazing ally to, to black people. But um, he, it, it like I said, everything was divinely orchestrated because I he, he gives me two days to sign up for his program. I did not, and I would never tell anybody else to do this because it's the worst thing that you can do. I did not even read the contract, nor did I hire a lawyer to look over the contract. I knew nothing about investment. All I saw was $100,000, and then I had a conversation with him, and I trusted him instinctively. I knew that he was somebody I could trust, and he did not fool me. Um, I signed on without reading the contract, as I said, but it was one of the best things I've done. But um, he, his program was all about showing us how to build the company up without taking millions of investment dollars. He had a theory that a lot of people ruin their companies by taking so much investment. Because if you look at a company like Vice, right? And we look at Vice and we say that's a unicorn company, billion dollar valuation. Um, you would think that taking all of this investment money is the thing is the way to go. Mark Zuckerberg was the one who kind of set the tone for media companies taking all this investment money, right? And, and ballooning like they did. But the reality is that a lot of these um, digital media companies don't know what they're doing. A lot of people don't know what the future of digital media is. It's fairly new. So not everybody knows how to monetize on a level where they can, you know, they're giving you 200 million. Do you know how to give them 200 million X? You know what I mean? Do you, have you figured out a business model to pay off the investors um, and to grow your reach in a way where you're not losing your audience and losing the authenticity and the niche audience that you created? Because the only way to grow right now in media, for the most part, for media companies is to increase your audience. But if you increase your audience, do you lose the original base? That's like us, you know what I mean? And so for me, it depends on what kind of business you have, but our business was very sensitive because we were dealing in a black community. So the moment that I had investors invest, the moment that I would have investors invest in this company, they would be more concerned about their money. Mm -hmm. being made and these investors have 20 companies on their portfolio so they don't care if you're a company their strategy right. is to make all of you guys go as hard as you can kill your companies and then see which ones float to the top they don't care you know what I mean and so to me having all of the board of directors um, having all of these investors with all of their different opinions 
um, in our company, which I knew our audience was very sensitive, could have meant death to our company. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.